Hi everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. This is Teacher Kevin giving you your kind of K, knowledge. I can go serious. I can go funny. I can go real. And I can go fancy. But every time I teach, I do it with sincerity. This is DepEd TV. Last time, we learned the relationship between the respiratory system and the circulatory system and how important their functions are to maintain homeostasis in our body. The respiratory system works directly with the circulatory system to provide oxygen to the body. This substance moves into the blood vessels that circulates the oxygen-rich blood to tissues and cells in the body. We have three major blood vessels, namely veins, which carries the deoxygenated blood back to the heart, the arteries, which transports blood away from the heart, and capillaries, where nutrients and wastes are exchanged. Circulation is made possible because of the blood flow initiated by the contraction of the ventricles of the heart. Dear grade 9 learners, let us play a game. I will be singing excerpts from different songs. What you will do is you will fill in the blanks with the missing word. Okay? Here is the first song. Every time I hear the music play Reminds me of the things that you've been through In my mind, I can't believe it's true But in my mind, the reality is you Did you get it right? Amazing! Now, here is our final song. Listen carefully and guess the missing bird. If you love me like you tell me, please be careful with my. You can take it, just don't break it, or my world will fall apart. The missing word for the two songs is the word, you got it right, heart. Today, we are going to talk about the heart and blood circulation. Join me as I give you a quick tour to see what's inside the circulatory system. Here is how the parts work. The human heart consists of four chambers. The left and right atrium, which are the receiving chambers, contract to push blood into the lower chambers, the left and right ventricles which act as the pumping chambers propel blood to the lungs or to the rest of the human body. There are two distinct but linked circuits in the human circulation called the pulmonary and systemic circuits. Both circuits transport blood and gases. The pulmonary circuit transports blood to and from the lungs where it picks up oxygen and delivers carbon dioxide for exhalation. The systemic circuit transport oxygenated blood to virtually all of the tissues of the body and returns relatively deoxygenated blood and carbon dioxide to the heart to be sent back to the pulmonary circulation. The right ventricle pumps the oxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk which leads toward the lungs and divides into two branches into the left and right pulmonary arteries. These vessels in turn branch many times before reaching the pulmonary capillaries, where gas exchange occurs. The carbon dioxide exits the blood and oxygen enters. The pulmonary trunk arteries and their branches are the only arteries in the postnatal body that carry relatively deoxygenated blood. Highly oxygenated blood returning from the pulmonary capillaries in the lungs passes through a series of vessels that join together to form the pulmonary veins, the only postnatal veins in the body 
that carry highly oxygenated blood. The pulmonary veins conduct blood into the left atrium, which pumps the blood into the left ventricle, which in turn pumps oxygenated blood into the aorta and on the many branches of the systemic circuit. Eventually, these vessels will lead to the systemic capillaries, where exchange with the tissue, fluid, and cells of the body occurs. In this case, oxygenated and nutrients exit the systemic capillaries to be used by the cells in their metabolic processes, and carbon dioxide and waste products will enter the blood. The blood exiting the systemic capillaries is lower in oxygen concentration than when it entered. The capillaries will ultimately unite to form venules, joining to form ever larger veins, eventually flowing into the two major systemic veins, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, which return blood to the right atrium. The blood in the superior and inferior vena cava flows into the right atrium, which pumps blood into the right ventricle. This process of blood circulation continues as long as the individual remains alive. Dual System of the Human Blood Circulation Blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle, where it is pumped into the pulmonary circuit. The blood in the pulmonary artery branches is low in oxygen but relatively high in carbon dioxide. Gas exchange occurs in the pulmonary capillaries, and blood high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide is returned to the left atrium. From here, blood enters the left ventricle, which pumps it into the systemic circuit. Following exchange in the systemic capillaries, blood returns to the right atrium and the cycle is repeated. Wow! Seems like we are having a roller coaster ride with those complexities of the pulmonary and systemic circuit. But don't be confused. The pulmonary circuit is just the involvement of where the deoxygenated blood becomes an oxygenated one. Just imagine a deflated tire because it is similar to the deoxygenated blood. It cannot be used by a car, so it has to be inflated with air. Again, this is the flow of the pulmonary and systemic circuits. The deoxygenated blood will pass through the venules, going into the larger blood vessel called the veins. Then, it will enter the superior and inferior vena cava. Then, the deoxygenated blood will enter the right atrium and will pass to the tricuspid valve down to the right ventricle. Then, the deoxygenated blood will pass through the pulmonary semilunar valve or sometimes called the pulmonic valve going to the pulmonary arteries and enters the lungs for oxygenation. After that, the now oxygenated blood will pass into the pulmonary veins going to the left atrium, after which passes to the mitral valve, or also known as the bicuspid valve, and now reaching the left ventricle. And it passes to the aortic semilunar valve and is now entering the aorta, where the blood is ready for ejection. Next is the arteries, then to the arterioles, and finally, in the capillaries. Now, let me get out of the system first and get back to you. On your screen, you'll see these personalities holding hearts with parts written in them. All you have to do is you will pick the one who has the heart that contains your answer. Just the letter. Ready? Choose all that apply. Two circuits by which the gases are circulated in and out of the lungs. Tissues in the body that transport the nutrients, gases, and other substances in the human body.
transports blood to and from the lungs, where it picks up oxygen and delivers carbon dioxide for exhalation. Transports oxygenated blood to virtually all of the tissues of the body and returns relatively the oxygenated blood and carbon dioxide to the heart to be sent back to the pulmonary circulation. Did you pick the right answer? Let's see! Two circuits by which gases are circulated in and out of the lungs are pulmonary and systemic circuit. Tissues in the body transport the nutrients, gases, and other substances in the human body. Transports blood to and from the lungs where it picks up oxygen and delivers carbon dioxide for exhalation. Transports oxygenated blood to virtually all of the tissues of the body and returns relatively deoxygenated blood and carbon dioxide to the heart to be sent back to the pulmonary circulation. There you have it! Were you able to pick up the right answer? Congratulations and I hope you enjoyed the activity. Now, for our next learning task, you will examine the diagram that shows the pulmonary and systemic circuit. A blood that carries gases enters into the venules and gas exchange happens in the capillaries. What I want you to do is to write the number that corresponds to the correct order by tracing the blood flow in correct order. Do it in your notebook. Note that some numbers are indicated already. Did you all get them right? Now, time to rest your brain cells from answering. Let's have craft time. We are going to make a face mask. Hello everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. This is Teacher Kevin and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today, I will be teaching you how to make your very own face mask using materials that can be found inside your house, okay? Watch this video. First, cut two cloth rectangles. Place on top of each other lengthways. Fold over the top of the fabric and stitch all the way across. Fold the bottom up and stitch inwards from the edge on either side. Put kitchen towel or tissue inside the pocket as filter. Fold the shorter sides in about 1 cm and stitch leaving a gap to thread elastic. Thread a 15 cm piece of elastic through the hem on one side and tie in the ends. Repeat on the other side. Gather the side of the mask on the elastic and adjust so that the mask fits their face. Then stitch the elastic in place. Here now is our finished product. Hi there, grade 9 learners. It's time for us to answer the questions. Question number one is, what is the economic implication in making your own washable face mask? The answer in question number one is, of course, making your own face mask can be a source of income, so you can earn your own money. Question number two is, why is it mandatory for us to wear face masks during this time of pandemic or COVID-19? 
The answer in question number two is wearing face masks can somehow avoid getting infected by this COVID-19 virus. And for our third question, how can you relate our activity in making this washable face mask in our lesson about respiratory and circulatory system? The answer in question number three is face masks can filter the microorganisms and viruses that can enter in our mouth and our nose that can affect the respiratory and the circulatory system. Congratulations to all who participated in our activities. See you again next week for another fun learning day. This is Teacher Kevin and this is DepEd TV!